Hi sisters, James Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Jumping right into today's brand new video. I am very, very excited, but also nervous for this video. Um, this is something that I've wanted to film for a very, very long time now, and that is how I used to do my makeup versus how I do it now. This trend has already been going around for a pretty long time now, so this is definitely not an original idea. A few years ago, people were doing the how I do my makeup in high school versus now challenge, which was so much fun to look back at everybody's transformations. And even I did a video a few months ago where I reacted to and recreated my first ever makeup tutorial. And even though I've only been in the beauty community, doing makeup for about three years now, I will definitely say that my makeup has changed so, so, so much, hopefully for the better. I mean, I literally used to have Sharpie eyebrows that took up half my freaking forehead and a man bun that was a literal rat's nest on the top of my head. In the past three years, I will confidently say that I've definitely upped my style, makeup tips, techniques, and products that I use. So for today's video, I thought it'd be so much fun to split my face right in half and do a little beauty battle with myself, basically, when you literally don't have anybody left to clap with. <laughs> and do one half of my face, how I used to do my makeup with all the old techniques and products, and the other half of my face, how I do it today. See the comparison, see how everything has changed, and hopefully you guys will pick up some tips and techniques of what not to do along the way. So without further ado, let's take a trip down memory lane and jump right in. I just scrolled up my Instagram for several minutes. Literally, I have PTSD from looking at some of these disgusting photos, but I came across this look that was posted on May 14th, 2016, and it is captioned Tangerine. I feel like for the old half of my face, this is a really good look to do today that encompasses kind of all the techniques that I used to use and now um, don't use for obvious reasons. That has gotta be the harshest contour I've ever seen in my entire life. My eyebrows taking up half my forehead. I will say, and pat myself on the back a little bit too, through scrolling down through all these repulsive looks, the one thing that I was never horrible at was eyeshadow. Everything else has been majorly improved, but I was always pretty decent at eyeshadow and it's always been a favorite part of the makeup routine. So definitely a, just a super simple glam eyeshadow look. My winged eyeliner is going straight out. I don't even think I have a lash on. My nose is not even close to contour and my lips are lined normally. Um, and this was before I had anything done to them, so. You get the picture. I think this is the perfect look to recreate today. And even though it is pretty simple, I think there's going to be some very dramatic changes from one side to the other. And hopefully I'll be able to show you guys a lot of really helpful tips and techniques. So let's jump right in. So the first step of a makeup routine is of course always skin prep. Now on the old side, I'm just gonna go right into the Benefit Pore Professional Primer, no moisturizer, nothing beforehand. I literally used to be obsessed with this stuff. I would use the most of it. This primer for me is one of the main reasons that started my conspiracy theory that primers do absolutely nothing because um, this primer actually hurt my skin more than it actually helped, which I'll get into when it comes to the nose in a little bit. Now on the newer side of my face, I'm gonna first grab the Tatcha Water Cream. This is my all time favorite moisturizer. And a good moisturizer is super important for me before I put on any makeup to make sure my skin stays hydrated and healthy all throughout the day and is able to breathe underneath eight ounces of product. Obviously, as you can see, I'm having a very intense breakout on this side of my face right now. I'm not exactly sure why. I've been traveling a lot recently and I've been, of course, taking extra precautions to make sure my skin stays healthy, but we're not gonna be taking this into consideration when it comes to the final judgment later on. Thanks. <laughs> Although I don't always prime now, when I do, skincare is, of course, my number one priority and that means I usually go with the Tatcha Silk Campus Primer, which I feel like is also very, very fitting today because just like the professional, this one is obviously meant to fill in everything and make it very, very even. So hopefully we're going to flatten out these pimples that we have going on. So normally next I would jump right into foundation, but on the old makeup side, we actually have a few more steps to do before that. So I'm gonna let the primer sit on the new side. And right now we're going to go in and color correct using the LA Girl Pro Concealer in the shade um, Literal Orange. So I obviously am a man and I do have a five o'clock shadow that is really, really inconvenient. I am getting laser hair removal all over my face to get rid of it because I absolutely hate it. But now I just use a full coverage foundation and a lot of concealer to cover it up to kind of eliminate using 87 different products on my face. But um, back then it was not the case. So I'm just gonna put this basically everywhere that hair grows. I was apparently convinced that I was doing drag every time I put my makeup on. <laughs> and I'm just gonna blend that in using my beauty blender. This next step, I cannot believe I ever actually did, but if you scroll back to one of my first YouTube videos, it is most definitely there. When I first started doing makeup, I had a major, major issue where every time I would do my foundation, it would always completely slip off my nose and leave little holes and cracks and look disgusting whenever I tried to nose contour. I was so convinced that it was the oils in my nose that I was literally just sweating all day long, but I later found out once I was educated that it was actually the professional primer, not really working together with the foundation that I always used, and that is why. That is also why I stopped using this combination. 
But at one point I did finally find a trick to fix that and I taught you guys in my videos if anybody remembers from literally day one and that was using a MAC paint pot and literally putting a huge layer of that on my nose before I actually put any foundation on. And the logic was that if the foundation slipped off when I tried to contour, there'd be another extremely thick layer underneath. Absolutely ridiculous. I really could not tell you why try a new primer or try a new foundation never crossed my mind like a normal human being, but this trick did do the trick for a pretty long time. I'm gonna keep my paint pot out because we're gonna be using it later on on the new side when it comes to eyeshadow, but it is now time to move into foundation. For foundation on the old side, I'm gonna grab the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick in the shade Y325. Now, if you've been along since day one, you would know that this was literally my ride or die holy grail. I still to this day, I really like this foundation and the formula to it a lot. If you guys saw my Finding My Perfect Foundation Shade video from a few weeks ago, this was literally one of my top contenders and so many of the comments said that you guys really, really liked this color on me. But when I moved to LA, it was just a little bit too dry for my skin and I've obviously moved on to Born This Way, which is what I'm gonna put on the other side of my face. I'm gonna start by blending this in using my Morphe M439 brush. Use Code James for 10% off. That has never changed. I can already tell that this color is way, way, way too yellow for me. I would always just blend the foundation right over the color corrector as well and then always be really upset and confused why I would get hate comments telling me that I looked orange. Should have listened. Now on the newer side of my face, I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Born This Way foundation and for today's look, I'm gonna mix together the shade Pearl and Natural Beige. The Born This Way foundation is a little bit more medium coverage but can be buildable and I like this formula a lot better because it's more hydrating and keeps my skin looking healthy throughout the day as opposed to cakey. And I'm just blending this in using the brand new at Jeffree Star X Morphe Contour and Highlight Sponge. <sighs> of course my camera stopped recording for a few seconds. Sorry you guys, I am back. Would it really be a James Charles video without a technical difficulty? No. Um, next up is obviously going to be concealer, getting right back into things. I went in on the old side with the LA Girl Pro Concealer in the shade Porcelain, literally the lightest shade that they have. I actually have nothing bad to say about this concealer. The formula is really, really bomb and it's only $6 as well. I just wanted to move on and try out different formulas. So on the new side, I used the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer in the shade Vanilla. I'm just gonna blend this in using a beauty blender. I wanna move on to the next step pretty quickly because no matter what foundation and concealer and primer I'm using on my face, if I don't work fast, I get very, very creasy and crusty pretty quickly. So. I'm gonna grab the Cody Airspun powder on the old side. Obviously you guys know this powder has been with me since day one. Um, I love this one. This treated me very, very well when I was living back in New York. But this is also the powder that created Flashback Mary and it definitely made me look very, very cakey because I was using way too much of it. But that's the whole point of learning and improving as an artist. So I'm just gonna grab a powder puff and dip right in, pack this into place. I can't believe that I used to literally do this. On the other side of my face, I'm gonna grab the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder and I'm going to use my beauty sponge to melt this into the skin. Just for, you know, a slightly lighter coverage look. <laughs> I really, really like using my same damn beauty sponge to push in the powder to the skin. I'm not really sure when I made this change, but I am so glad that I did because I feel like this just does so much of a better job to still set everything in place so it doesn't slip around during the day. But it just looks so much more natural when you're up close. You don't get that same kind of gross, cakey, dry texture that you can sometimes get using a powder puff. I just feel like it really holds up a whole lot better. Then it's gonna grab a tiny little bit of extra powder on a fluffy brush and just go over everything to make sure everything is nice and set in place and that I didn't miss any areas. Now that both halves of my face are set in place, the next step of my routine is of course going to be to contour and chisel everything out to add some dimension. But before I do that, on the new side, I wanna go ahead and give myself a quick spritz of the Morphe Prep and Set Setting Spray, just to kind of melt everything together. And this is not something that I used to do before, so I'm going to keep my palette up here to separate it. I don't know if you can fully see it on camera, but looking in the mirror, this side of my skin is definitely just looking a little bit more radiant. You can kind of see the skin popping through, which I really, really like. Whereas this side is still really beautiful. It's super just full coverage and very, very matte. So it really just depends on the type of look you're going for. Now for contouring, the one palette that I used to use every single day was the Kat Von D Shade and Light palette. And not gonna lie, it had a really, really bomb formula and I loved it for a long time. But unfortunately, I no longer have it in my collection and I refuse to go buy it and support her. So I'm just gonna use the Anastasia Contour Kit and just go a little bit more heavy handed than usual. Gonna grab my Morphe M405 brush and dip right there into the middle shade and just go right in there. I used to be obsessed with going in the absolute most with contour and I'm really not even sure why. My cheekbones and jawline are already pretty defined to begin with. I really just wanted that like chiseled jawline moment which really didn't even look that good and honestly just looked ridiculous but 
um, we're just gonna recreate it today for the sake of the video. I'm gonna use even more to contour out my forehead. I mean, this honestly has not really changed that much because I'm definitely still insecure about the size of it, but I am a lot better at making it look softer and blended while still bringing it down a little bit. Now you're probably thinking, all right, James, that looks crazy, let's move on to the other side. And trust me, I think he the same thing. But 2016 James was not, because one thing that I love to do was after my contour was already laid down, I would take a smaller fluffy brush and dip into an even darker contour shade and just get, you know, a little bit on there and just go right into the absolute hollow of my cheekbone and just put down a little bit more. Okay, that was maybe a little bit much. It never really looked that bad. Now going into that same exact M405 brush, well, not the same exact one, but same type, you get the point. And to begin to get the same color, I'm gonna go in and contour the other side, but just go a little bit lighter. Holding this brush right between my sideburn and ear and just lightly blending this downwards in circular motions, keeping it very, very light and soft, pulling just a little bit onto the top of my forehead and still underneath the jawline as well. And then just gonna grab an M527 brush and dip into this shade next door, which is a little bit more bronzy caramel type of color. And I'm gonna use this to go lightly over top of that contour color, just to kind of blend together the natural skin tone and the contour without making it look too harsh. I'm gonna quickly apply a little bit of the MAC blush in the shade Peaches in my Morphe E4 brush. You guys know this blush is my all time favorite, but I'm only gonna put this on the new side because I literally hated blush when I first started doing makeup and never wore it. I really did not know what I was missing because this looks so pretty and youthful, but oh well, you live and you learn, I guess. And now we get to move on to one of the most important parts of my makeup routine, which is my nose contour. Now, if you've been following me since day one, um, I'm sorry, first and foremost, because my nose used to look so bad in all my Instagram photos because I did not know how to contour it. And even when I was learning how to contour, it was still a really, really rough process. At first I could not figure out how to do the illusion, so it just looked bad. Then I learned how to do it. Then I learned how to Photoshop and Facetune, so it looked so fake to the point where I couldn't even breathe. And now several years later, I am finally at a place where I'm confident with my nose and how it photographs in photos. I stopped erasing the entire thing in editing apps, but I definitely still do contour quite a bit. So I'm gonna grab my contouring brush and dip into the same exact contouring palette. Firstly, on the old side, I'm just gonna grab that same contour color and a lot of it too. And I'm just gonna go right in on the actual edge of my nose. Oh my God, this is triggering. I'm blending that shape right upwards. Oh wow, this, is, this, this hurts. This hurts a lot. Now, if you really like the way that your nose looks in makeup naturally, of course this step doesn't really matter. But for me personally, I prefer my nose to look a lot more narrow. So I'm gonna grab the same exact contour color once again, but instead of putting it on the absolute edge of my nose and going around the bulb, which just makes it look really, really wide, I'm gonna kind of focus this color on the top of the nose bridge and pretend that that bulb tip isn't there and just go right over it, kind of straightening it out which gives the illusion of a more pinched and straight nose. Just gonna do another quick spritz of setting spray before I move on to baking, which is the next step. Oh. You're kidding. That was kind of a good Wow, <laughs> are you kidding me? Let's try that again, a little bit of Urban Decay this time. Then it's going in with some more Cody Airsun powder and on a powder puff to bake. I used to put the setting powder here and just go straight down. And then I'm bringing it all the way up to the back of my head. I have no idea why. And then right on the center of the forehead. And then just using the Laura Mercier on the other side. I'm gonna bring this powder all the way up to the side of my nose to snatch it and create that illusion. And then just keeping it focused right underneath my eyeball in this little triangular area. I am very excited to tell you guys that for the brow portion of today's video, I am actually partnering with Anastasia Beverly Hills. That's right, to show you guys their brand new dip brow gel and how I like to use it. And also how I wouldn't necessarily recommend using it. If you've been around since day one, you probably remember the James Charles Block Brick Sharpie eyebrows. Now, at the time, I loved them. A few people on Instagram loved them, but for the most part, um, they were disgusting and everybody made fun of them all the time, including the queen herself, Anastasia Beverly Hills, who tried to get me to tweeze them all off and I literally looked at her face and said, absolutely not. Can you say ego? They had no arch to them whatsoever. In fact, they almost looked like I was frowning half the time. They literally took up half my forehead in thickness and they also had no dimension either. They were all just one color, straight, like dark brown, almost black all the way through. 
Three years later, after a whole lot of bullying, hate comments, tweezing, and practice, I am finally at a place where I really, really love my brows. So let's compare the old to the new. Starting off, I'm gonna grab my Anastasia Dip Brow in the shade Dark Brown and my Anastasia Number 7B brush. And I'm just going to dip in to the pot right here and I'm going to grab quite a lot. I usually like to take this spoolie first and go upwards just to kind of get the shape of the brow, but I'm actually going to use this spoolie and brush them this way to actually kind of flatten them out since I've definitely tweezed a arch into my brows over the past few years. And I'm just gonna go right in, starting at the front of my brow, which I never recommend doing anymore, and just drawing a line. This really used to happen every single day. And then at the very last second, straight down. <laughs> ah! Oh no! Grabbing a little bit more on the same little angle brush, I'm just going to sketch in the tail of my eyebrow, going up the top, straight down, and then using whatever's left, which is apparently a lot. I'm just gonna brush that right in. I can't believe I'm doing this right now. <laughs> ah! Oh my God. That used to be on my face every day and I never thought there was anything wrong with it. As if that wasn't enough, I'm next gonna grab the brand new Anastasia Dip Brow Gel and I'm gonna layer that right over the top. Now listen, I'm actually really excited to tell you guys about this product today because it's really, really dope. This is a super, super pigmented, full coverage, waterproof new brow gel, but it can also be used like Dip Brow to actually sketch in hairs and actually add hairs in place. I've personally been loving using this on myself before I even draw anything in and also on my friends that don't have as many brow hairs because it does such a good job of kind of sketching that in and still making it look like a natural look but like I said this is very very pigmented so if you were going for this block eyebrow which I would not recommend you could really just go right in and push that product right in there for the original James Charles Sharpie eyebrow look. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the LA Girl Pro Concealer and I'm just gonna squeeze that onto the back of my hand. And then just grabbing a Morphe M410 brush, just gonna clean that up a little bit. Now moving on to the now side of my face, thank God, I'm gonna grab the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the shade Medium Brown to start this off. Using the spoolie end, I'm just going to brush all the hairs upwards and then going right in, I'm going to lightly start in the middle of my brow, drawing just tiny little hair-like strokes at the bottom just to create a little bit of dimension. Then just following the natural shape of my actual brow bone and going above that, going to bring that line upwards, creating an arch, which is flattering for human faces. And then when I get to the tail, I'm just going to pull that line straight out as opposed to straight down. Going back into the spoolie each time as well to make sure that nothing ever gets too intense or dark. Then I'm just going to fill in that tail. I'm gonna clean this brow up in a second, but I'm pretty happy with the shape so far. I'm next gonna go back into the brand new, once again, Anastasia Dip Brow Gel. But this time I'm gonna use the color Soft Brown, which is lighter than my natural brow colors. Like I said, this product is very full coverage. So for someone like me who likes a defined brow but doesn't wanna look like this, I like to use a lighter shade and go in super, super lightly and use this brow gel to still lock everything in place while adding a a little bit of extra color, but not a whole lot. What's super cool about the Dip Brow Gel as well is that it does, of course, set down and lock your hairs in place, but the drying time is a little bit slower, so I'm actually gonna take another clean brow brush, this is the number 12, and just go right in and use the excess Dip Brow Gel that is in the hairs. Use this to lightly blend the product forward into the front of the brow, and then using that same brush, just making tiny little upwards flicks to mimic the appearance of real hairs in areas that are a little bit more sparse. Now the new Dip Brow Gel is smudge proof, so it is definitely not going anywhere, but I do wanna go ahead and clean it up just a little bit. So I'm gonna grab the Born This Way Concealer one more time, and then just a rounded concealer brush. And I'm just gonna go right in and really make sure it is super clean. All right, sisters, and those are both eyebrows all complete. Go ahead, take your screenshots. I've handled the bullying once, I can do it again. Let's just be thankful that there's been quite an improvement over the last three years. Here, of course, we have the original James James Charles Sharpie Brick Eyebrows. And on the side, we have the new and improved Sister Snatch Brow, both created using the brand new Anastasia Dip Brow Gel. It'll keep your brows waterproof, smudge proof, and looking absolutely fantastic all day long. If you guys wanna check this out, it is launching online at AnastasiaBeverlyHills.com and in stores on March 7th, and it is only retailing for $18, and I totally would recommend. That took plenty long enough, and I never want to experience that again. So I'm gonna move right on to the next step of my routine, which is of course going to be 
the eyeshadow. Now, for eyeshadow primer, once again, for the third time in this video, I'm gonna grab the LA Girl Pro Concealer in the shade Porcelain, and I'm just gonna go right in and paint this on the lid. This is what I used to do in every single one of my makeup looks, and then I'm just going to blend this in. And I'm gonna set that base in place using some more Cody Airsoft Powder on a dent packing brush. And then for the other side, I'm gonna grab my MAC Paint Pot once again for a slightly different use this time. And I'm just going to lay down a generous layer of this right over top of my eyelid, and I am not going to set this one with any translucent setting powder. All right, you guys, so to create this warm tone smoky eye that I had on in the original photo, I'm of course gonna grab the James Charles X Morphe Iconic Palette, and I'm going to basically use all of the shades in the middle row, but this video is already getting very, very long, so I'm gonna do the eye portion off camera. Like I said earlier, the only one thing that I didn't have that much trouble with was eyeshadow. Of course, I've improved my techniques and gotten better at blending, but regardless, I've done so many different videos on eyeshadow techniques, so I'm gonna cut quickly, still use the techniques that I would have used then versus now, and I'll come back and show you guys the finished look and move on to the next step. All right, sisters, we are back, and I just completed the eyeshadow on both eyes off camera quickly. As you can see, the looks are a little bit different because I wanted to recreate the look exactly on this eye. It is just a little warm tone, half cut crease moment, and it looked like it was a matte shade on the lid. And on this side, I did kind of like a modernized version. If I was to do a warm tone, half cut crease, this is kind of what I think of, just kind of orange and brownie tones pulled out into a nice little wing, and then a metallic glitter right on the lid, kind of messily placed, just so it reflects in the light and looks so incredibly stunning. But regardless, I think both eyes with different styles and techniques still look really, really beautiful. That being said, the next step of both of these eye looks is a winged liner. Although drawing a winged liner has never really changed for me, I definitely did learn a lot about where I like to place my wing. Probably the worst part of having thick eyebrows, aside from the hate comments, was the lack of eyeshadow space that it actually gave me to work with. And at the time, I obviously didn't know this, but when your eyebrow is taking up half of your eye region and then arches straight downwards, it really cuts off a lot of this outside area that I now like to use for blending really big eyeshadow looks. So when it came to drawing wing eyeliner when I first started, I really did not have a lot of room to do it. So the one mistake that I made all the time was drawing my wings straight out just like that. Now, don't get me wrong, drawing your wings straight out can be a really, really helpful technique. In fact, for my sisters that have hooded eyes, it is the absolute best way to draw on a wing eyeliner and make sure that it is actually seen. But for me, as someone who doesn't have hooded eyes, drawing your wings straight out can actually tend to drag the eye downwards, and especially with a brow that doesn't have any arch, it's really not helping. Over on this side, I'm going to pull the wing liner much more upwards in the same shape that I drew my eyeshadow in. Just like the eyeshadow, it is two completely different techniques and styles. I do honestly think that they both look really, really good. This wing turned out better than I honestly anticipated, but I definitely still prefer a wing that is much more pulled up. I just think it really makes the eye look so much more snatched and gives it life, whereas this eye just kind of looks a little bit more dead and basic in my opinion. Moving right along, I'm gonna give both sides of my lashes a nice curl. I'm then going to apply a heavy coat of the Benefit Roller Lash Mascara on the old side. And then on the newer side, I'm gonna add a light coat of the MAC Extend plate mascara. Now as for lashes, I'm zooming in on this photo and it looks like I don't have any on. I'm not exactly sure, but I do naturally have pretty long and thick eyelashes to begin with, so I honestly might not have been wearing them considering when I first started doing makeup, I literally could not put on lashes without gluing my eyes shut. So I guess I'm gonna be skipping that on this side of my face today, but on this side, I'm gonna pop on the Lily Lashes Miami's So Extra. Use code James for 15% off your purchase. All right, you guys, those are both eyes, all complete, looking beautiful, looking fabulous on both sides kind of, um, we're going to go ahead and dust off the beak because this powder has been sitting on my face for literally like too long now. So let's do that. It is now time to get our glow on. And what is so crazy is that we're actually going to be using the same product on both sides of my face. And that is the Anastasi Beverly Hills So Hollywood Illuminator. This is literally the first highlighter that I ever bought and I've stuck with it since day one. I love this, the color works so well on my skin tone. I still reach for it every single time I do my makeup. Clearly, as you can see, she's seen better days, but she's still working good as new. As a lot of you guys know, when it comes to applying a highlighter or metallic shadow, using a tiny little bit of setting spray can really make a color pop. Now, when I used to apply highlighter a very, very long time ago, I would do what you're not supposed to do, which is basically drench the brush first. This is the Morphe M501, and then dip into the pan. While this does apply a very, very blinding and metallic glow, this can negatively affect the formula in the pan because you're basically adding setting spray and water to the mixture where it was not intended to be. Also, when you apply highlighter wet, it can look really, really beautiful, but it can also look super streaky. This might not look that bad on camera, but in person, this looks absolutely ridiculous. I don't everybody loves a good glow and trust me, so do I, but it just is not flattering. I also used to shoot my Instagram photos in a basement using only a ring light. So I used to have a major problem actually getting my highlight to reflect for some reason. And I think that that's probably why I went so ham on the setting spray and highlighter before. But regardless, let's go ahead and highlight the other side and make it look nice and pretty the way I do it now. This time around, I'm gonna grab my setting spray, but instead of spraying my brush, 
brush first, I'm gonna actually give my face a good little spritz, once again, to kind of melt all the powders together, but also to give some wetness for the highlighter to stick to, and I'm gonna be using the M504 brush this time, which is a little bit smaller than the M501, and I'm gonna dip into the, once again, Soul Hollywood Illuminator, getting quite a lot on there, and I'm just gonna apply this right on the top of the cheekbone, keeping it most intense right here, and then just using any excess that's left on the brush to blend it out. Much prettier in my opinion. I'm then just gonna grab a little bit of face from my palette and add that right on top. Oh, that just looks so pretty in the little sparkle of glitter. Grabbing a little bit more face on that same brush, I'm just gonna tap it off so there's not a whole lot of product on there. And I'm gonna pop a little bit right above my brow bone for a subtle little highlight here. And then also a little bit on the top of the chin as well. My nose highlight has never changed. Just grabbing the M431 and a little bit more face on the end of that brush. I'm just gonna draw a straight line right down the center and then a tiny little dot at the tip for my little explanation point. All right, you guys, with our highlighter being on and glowing to the gods, we can go ahead and move on to our last step, which is going to be the lips. So for both sides of the lips today, I'm gonna to be using the Ofra Liquid Lipstick in the shade Venice. This is another one of those products that I've been using since day one and literally have not found a better version of. I really, really like the formula of the Ofra Liquid Lips. Now, since this photo was taken a few years ago, full disclosure, I have had my lips done. That was a personal choice by me. It has been well over a year since I actually did them though, so they are definitely going way, way down, but uh, they are still nowhere near as small as they were in this picture. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this lipstick to to the old makeup side and I'm not going to overline literally in the slightest bit. And then on the newer side, I'm gonna go just slightly outside of my lip line for a more voluminous look. And we are finally finishing off both sides with a little bit of sister setting spray to lock it all in place. and I think that is my how I did my makeup then versus now look all complete. Oh my gosh, you guys, it was so much fun taking a trip down memory lane and reminiscing all the old products, tips and techniques that I used to use a few years ago. It's only been three short years, but I am so proud of the progress that I made from this to this. I do think both sides still look beautiful in their own way, but, but I can also happily admit that three years ago, I came to the beauty industry with a whole lot of passion, but also a whole lot of ego as well. I truly thought I was the best of the best that I could not get any better, but boy, it was I wrong. Practice really, really does make perfect, and I am so grateful for every single one of you guys out there who saw potential, stuck by me, and also left constructive criticism, and that goes for all my artist friends out there as well. Thank you guys for always teaching me new tips and techniques that I get to integrate into my routine, and just overall, thank you for inspiring me and being really cool friends. Um, I had so much fun doing this video today and seeing how my style has changed, and what's even so crazy is that I'm probably gonna look back at this video in five years and be like, ew, this looks absolutely disgusting. But regardless, I hope that all of you sisters will still be here in the long run and we can look back and laugh together, and I cannot wait to see where the makeup industry takes us both. If you enjoyed today's brand new video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below and show your sister support and love. It really means so, so, so much to me and really helps me out. And also click that big red subscribe button down below and come join the sisterhood. We are over 14 million sisters strong and I'd love to have you join the family. And don't forget to click that bell icon so you can get a notification every time I upload a brand new video. If you'd like to follow me on our makeup journey, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. They're both just James Charles and my Snapchat for more behind the scenes side stuff is James Charles with an extra S after Charles. This video, sister shout out goes to sister Sarah Bath. Thank you so much, love, for always following and supporting. No, I love you literally so, so, so much. And if you'd like to be the next video's sister shout out, don't forget to always reach out with video links when they go live on Twitter and also turn on my YouTube post notifications. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. Here's for another amazing three years of makeup progress. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.